Hello class, in this video I'm going to discuss exercise 6.41. You have to do this for your problem set, so I won't do all of it here, but I'll give you some uh, hints if you're having trouble with 6.40, 6.41, or 6.42. You'll notice that these get a rating star on the funness scale, so these ones are a little bit more fun than the other ones you've been doing. Unfortunately, the book doesn't even have any two or three fun proofs, so we'll have to invent some of those uh, for ourselves. 6.41, I pulled it up in Fitch for you. This is a tautology made up of Boolean connectives, so you have no premise. Uh, you just have to prove this uh, out of thin air. How are you going to do that? Well, one thing you might remember is, uh, in order to prove a tautology with Boolean connectives, you have to get some premises somehow, and reductio is the only way to do so. So if you start a reductio, you're gonna at least get some kind of premise to work with. Or you might just have gotten stuck and then employed the rule uh, when all else fails, try a reductio. So the first thing we need to do is start a subproof, and here we have to put in our conclusion inside the scope of a negation. So I'm gonna just start out by giving you a negation with some parentheses to scope it. Now I have to reproduce this exactly. So I need to again reproduce my A conjunction B. So I have a bunch of parentheses here, but notice that's because my first disjunct here is parentheses. So don't, uh, don't um, mistake the scoping of these. So then I need my disjunct that's not A, and then I need one more disjunct for not B. So here I have my conclusion reproduced exactly uh, with a negation side, sign wide scope around it. Now that I'm ready to go, I've got that done, I could just show you as well, strategically, the, our plan is we're going to end this with a, with a contradiction, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have our conclusion again. I'll just take the shortcut this time. And we're going to justify this by negation intro, because that's our reductio rule. So if we can do something like that, hey, it's going to check out. We're, we have a sound plan here. Of course, our goal sentence doesn't check out yet because we haven't done this properly. But notice that this line is checking out. We have structurally set up a reductio proof properly. Now we're on our way. We just have to figure out how do we use the information in this premise now in order to get to a contradiction symbol. Well, let's look at the main connectives. This is a negation wide scope around a disjunction. And the five-step plan should be springing to mind. So what we have to do is pick a disjunct, uh, put it in a subproof. So we're going to do something like this. We're going to start a subproof with one of those disjuncts. Now, again, you have to be careful. What is the disjunct? It's this thing. It's A, uh, excuse me, it's A and B. That is the disjunct. You could put parentheses around it if you want. Or you could, again, look down at your goal sentence. Here's my disjunct. It's this thing in parentheses, A and B. Put that in a subproof. Then build the disjunction, introduce your contradiction symbol. Eventually, what you're going to get out of that is a negation sign on the A and B part. Then do the five-step plan for your other two disjuncts, too. What are you going to get from those? You're going to get an A alone, and you're going to get a B alone after you do the five-step plan there. All of these things that you're going to be getting are inside this reductio subproof. And from those things, you're then going to have to try to prove a contradiction. Now, that might seem hard to do, but remember, just look at the main connectives of those. Well, A and B are going to be literal, so there's nothing, no connective for them. What's your main connective of your other thing that you got? It's the negation around a conjunction. And remember, whenever you have that, you're going to have to build that thing from the inside. So see if you can build it from the inside to prove your contradiction. Uh, there's a very heavy-handed hint for you. There's also, interestingly, there almost always is shortcuts to doing these. So maybe don't start with the first disjunct. You could do the five-step plan uh, on the second and third disjuncts first and see if you can figure out how to do the shortcut. Um, okay, so that's enough hints for you. I'm going to just leave it at that. Hopefully that helps you figure out what you should be doing on 6.40, 4.1, and 4.2. Okay, good luck.